Hi, today we are presenting The Learning Theory by Peter Jarvis. In his chapter, Learning to be a Person in Society, Peter Jarvis describes his process of formulating a comprehensive theory of learning. Finding out what learning is has always been a complicated endeavor, and so is Jarvis' definition of learning. He describes human learning as the combination of process throughout a lifetime whereby the whole person, body, genetic, physical, biological, and mind, knowledge, skills, attitudes, values, emotions, beliefs, and senses, experiences social situations, the perceived content of which is then transformed cognitively, emotively, or practically, or through any combination, and integrated into individual person's biography, resulting in a continually changing or more experienced person. Everything clear, right? Well. Let's take a closer look at the graph in which Jarvis describes the transformation of sensation into learning. Jarvis argues that learning always begins with experience. This experience is triggered by a bodily sensation that initially makes no sense to us. It can be a strange sound, sight or smell that we somehow cannot explain with our past experiences. Jarvis calls this sense of not knowing disjuncture. The next step in the learning process is that we transform these sensations into the language of our brain. We find or develop words for what we experience. In other words, we assign a meaning to what we experience. This is the part where the social environment comes in. Since humans are social, the language that we speak always reflects the society we are born into. Once we found words and meanings for the experience, we tend to develop categories that order and classify all following experiences. While the world around us is constantly changing, our language has categories that order the world and resolve the disjuncture between past experiences and bodily sensations. Without this ordering activity, we would be unable to make any sense of the world at all. As adults, we live most of our time in a stage where we take the world for granted. Young kids, however, are more often exposed to new sensations. They are in constant disjuncture with the world. When they grow up, they understand the meanings that the society gives to their perceptions. We also need to practice and repeat new meanings in order to memorize it. In this process, we get feedback from our surrounding on whether our meaning is socially acceptable. Jarvis acknowledges that we can decide to disagree with the feedback from our environment. But not all our knowledge stems from primary sensational experiences. In fact, a great deal of our knowledge comes from education through teachers or books. Jarvis calls these secondary experiences, when another person or a medium mediates information to us. For instance, you just had a secondary learning experience. As you are not experiencing the disjunction yourself, you are rather listening to and watching a video that mediates the information to you. To sum it up, there are three important points that Jarvis' definition includes and makes it a very comprehensive theory of learning. First, at the root of every learning lies experience. Second, learning involves the body, the mind and the social environment. And third, Theories of learning must include many academic disciplines, such as sociology, psychology, and philosophy. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching.